Hello everyone and welcome to task number three. In this task, we are going to dig a little bit deeper and go under the hood and try to understand how do we train and test artificial neural networks. If you guys remember, in the previous task, we learned about the uh, fundamentals of artificial neural networks. We learned about the difference between the biological neuron and the artificial neuron. We also went through an example where I showed you guys the math behind a single artificial neuron. And we found that it's just a basic simple equation that governs the input with the weights to generate a specific output. And we also uh, went through a practical example where we have been able to essentially generate a decision, which is e either zero or one, based on the values of the inputs and based on the values of the weights. And we learned that when we train artificial neural networks, essentially all what we're looking for is we're looking for the optimal values of weights. So when I say I'm teaching AI or training AI, all what I'm looking for Think of it as a huge optimization problem where I'm trying to find the best values of weights that can solve my problem. That's all it is. And if you guys recall as well, this was on the um, neuron level. Now I have a multi-layer perceptor network. So now I have, instead of having one single neuron, now I have multiple neurons, connect them all together in a feed forward fashion and essentially all what I'm looking for is try to optimize this matrix here. And this matrix, just again, optimization problem, trying to find the best values of weights. Okay, and we also went through a quiz. I hope you guys were able to figure that out. And now what I wanna do is I wanted to show you guys in details, how do we actually train and test artificial neural networks or AI in general? And please note that this lecture is categorized under the medium level difficulty. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we do in general when we train any AI model is we take the pool of the data and then we generally divide them into 80% for training and 20% for testing. And please note that numbers may vary. So for example, you might go with let's say 75% for training and 25% for testing. And what you do is you use the training data set, which is the majority of the data set, you use them to train the model. When I say train the model, that means you are doing weights update. Essentially, you are trying to optimize that matrix here, which is this matrix of weights, trying to find the best values of weights that can map the input to the output. And then once the model is trained, what we do is we freeze all the weights and then we test the trained model on a new data set, just brand new data that the model has never seen before during training. And we call that testing data set. And that would be 20%. Sometimes it ranges between, let's say, 15% to 30%, for example. And this is essentially a very important concept is we want to make sure when we train any AI model that the models are able to generalize and not memorize. Meaning, for example, if I, let's say, train a, um, a detector, let's say, to classify uh, fashion images, I wanted to make sure that if I take the same AI model and I actually put it in practice, if I put it in the field, on new data sets, basically that the model has never seen before during training, I want the model to still perform. I don't want the model to just learn all the details of the training data and that's it. It basically fails to generalize. We don't want that. We want the model to work with the training data and on the testing data as well, which is a brand new data that the model has never seen before during training. And a quick metaphor here is just to, um, uh, to clarify, basically, if let's assume that you are a student and you are, let's say, studying a new topic like AI, for example, and you plan to sit for an exam at the end. As a professor, for example, what we do is we give you guys assignments. So you give you assignments, you know, you understand the concepts and so on. And then on the exam, 
we don't give you the exact same assignments. It doesn't make sense to give you the exact same questions with the exact same numbers. Because if I do that, that means, you know, someone can go ahead without actually understanding the concept, without actually studying the material. They can just go ahead right there and just essentially uh, memorize the information. But that's not what we're looking for. We want to make sure that the concepts have been understood by the students. And it's pretty much the same idea here when it comes to training of AI models. Okay, so let's go ahead and cover the training process. And please note that what we're going to do right now is a type of training known as supervised machine learning. Okay, so we are doing the um, training right now in a supervised fashion. Okay, so let's assume that I built my artificial neural network. And let's assume that the values of weights here, these are randomly generated. Basically, it's like a brain, but that brain did not learn anything at all. We don't know anything at all. And now I wanted to teach that brain to essentially classify images of dogs. So if I give it an image like this, which is an image of a dog, and I'm going to use a label or what we call a desired output, and I'm going to call it dog. So essentially, I'm going to grab that brain, think of it as a little kid. He doesn't know anything yet. And I'm teaching that kid how to walk. So I'm showing the kid essentially the inputs and the output. I'm showing him the right way to do things. And that's the same deal here. I'm going to show the network, an image of a dog, and the desired label. Basically, I'm saying, OK, when you see that image, when you see that dog, that means it's a dog. That means a desired label or the target output is a dog. And because this brain right now is still didn't learn anything, okay, what's going to happen is the brain initially is going to tell me, well, the predicted output is a cat. So the Y estimate or Y hat is a cat or anything else. Because again, it didn't know what dog is initially because again, it's still brand new. So what we do in order to train artificial neural networks, we essentially calculate the error or the difference between the predictions, between what the model predicted, which is, let's say, a cat, and what we really want. And this is a dog, right? And we calculate the error signal. If the model predictions matches what we want, that's a great thing. That means the error is zero and we don't need to do anything at all, no update. However, most of the time, especially at the beginning, we actually have an error value. So we take the error and then we go back and then we run some sort of an optimizer to try to optimize the values of the weights within my artificial neural networks. And that's the overall idea of AI model training in a supervised fashion. We have input, we have output, and then we calculate the error. We take the error go back and update the weights in an iterative fashion. And similar to humans, we as humans, we don't learn in general in one shot. It actually takes us a very long time to learn. And we learn through trial and error. We learn through exper experience. And that's the same idea here. So when it comes to AI training, we start again, we train over a series of what we call it epochs. Epochs, these are multiple iterations of time where we go oppose kind of show the data the inputs and output to the model update the weights and then we want to get better and we do do that over and over again and that's essentially what i'm doing here at the beginning at epoch one we have a very large error and then over time the error goes down and then one more time error goes down and we keep doing that over and over again until we reach a state where the um, error is reduced dramatically and that's a great thing I'm gonna stop the training and that's essentially how you train AI models in a nutshell and please note that in the next lecture I'm gonna show you guys the details of what do you mean by an epoch and the actual definition especially I'm gonna link it back to Google teachable machines okay so let me summarize so what we have done so far is I'm gonna show you guys the difference between the training process and the testing process so in step number one, we're going to do the training. We are going to use the training data. So now I have inputs, I have outputs. We generally call the inputs X and the output Y. The model initially is doesn't know anything at all. It's just brand new. So the model will generate predictions, and these were going to be Y hat. I'm going to calculate the error, which is the difference between what the model predicted and what actually happened in real life. We'll take the error, go back, and update the weights. And we keep repeating that loop over and over again. 
until the model is trained. And this is very important. Once the model is trained, once I have that, then I'm gonna take all the network weights, I'm gonna freeze all these weights, and then I'm going to go ahead and test the intelligence or test the network using a brand new data that the model has never seen before during training. And please know this is very important. Once we take the brain here, this brain has already been frozen, meaning all these weights here, all these connections have been optimized. They are good to go. They are frozen. Now I can go ahead and essentially test them or assess their performance. And please know that right now intelligence has been captured, meaning right now all these weights are captured. It's all good. Now I can take the testing data, feed it into the model and then generate predictions. And that's the testing phase. And that's essentially the difference between the training process and the testing process. And that's it. That's all I have for task number three. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In task number four, let's go ahead, shift back to our uh, Google Teachable Machines, and then understand the AI lingo behind it. We're going to learn about what's the difference between learning rate, epochs, and so on. And that's it. That's all I have. I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture and see you in the next lecture.